Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by James Robertson, the main title designer for the Apple TV Plus comedy Shrinking. Uh, James, I, I love these titles. I think they're so cool and creative. And I guess just to start, like what kind of general, you know, direction and what kind of what were the early conversations like about how uh, this should look? Yeah, um, you know, we had worked with um, Kip and uh, Kip Kroger, who's an executive producer, as well as um, Bill Lawrence and Brett Goldstein before on the Ted Lasso ones. And um, so they really just entrusted us to come up with something something new for, for shrinking. They gave us a few episodes to watch. And um, there was a, you know, we knew that this was more of a character driven show. It wasn't just focusing on one character. So we knew it was important to um, you know, have it have the tail sequence express and show the struggles and the the storylines for all the different ensemble. Um, so that that's kind of all we knew going into it, and um, we started from there to just ideate on good ways of showing, um, you know, the whole therapy um, psychiatry process and um, and trying to make a metaphor for it. Really, that's what we went into it trying to do, um, and that's what we ended up doing. <laughs> Yeah, you did. And so like where people have, it's like, obviously there's like a, it's like a hedge maze, obviously. And like, you know, the, the little figures are trying to get out of the maze basically. Right. And like, kind of like as a community, like you're saying more than just in the Ted uh, opening where it's Ted sitting on all the chairs and like, kind of, I guess, affecting the, or yeah, Ted, like affecting the change, right. In the, in the Ted Lasso ones and this more of like a group thing. So, it was, I mean, that was like, obviously a theme that stood out for you. Were there other I guess like were there other early like was that an early idea like doing like a maze like that or was, were there other things that you were like kind of thinking about in addition to that before you settled on on what you did? Yeah, yeah. So um, at, at you you and Co, the company that um, made this whole sequence, we we had a few other pitches that went through. Um, you know, some involving the the therapist's couch and different things like that. But um, for me, I worked on this one involving a maze. I think that a maze has long been like a symbol for navigating the mind and therapy and psychology. So I, I I went with that route and I thought it would be really interesting to, you know, play with the idea that what um, Jimmy's doing in shrinking isn't like what a normal therapist would do where he shows you the way out of the maze. Um, here, we thought the idea would be pretty funny if he was a tour guide <laughs> holding his little red flag. And um, we thought it, it would be funny if a if someone was guiding you through this maze, but in the end was really just taking you through shortcuts, cheating at the maze, you know, finding ways to get through the maze that aren't not are just following the path. So um, digging under, tunneling through, and then at the end, you kind of see this whole big cacophony of the way everyone's cheating to to get through the maze. Um, so that that was really the the idea going in, um, and it's it's you know it's interesting to see everyone's different take on it, which I think everyone's idea of what it means is valid um that was kind of my going in is that it was a uh, a symbol for jimmy's process and his way of um you know his you know with his patients his therapy and and not taking the 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 straight route but kind of cheating and finding his own way to get to the end it's it's a really amazing and you get all of that in like the 30 seconds of the opening and i i just i'm just like i'm just fascinated that you're able to distill it down and be able to like I don't know, kind of tell that story in such a in such a economical fashion is really remarkable. Uh, it's just re really remarkable that you're able to do like narratively that much in the title sequence. I guess is that like, I mean, you like I was saying before we hit record, you've done Ted, Ted Lasso. Obviously, you've done a lot of different uh, title designs that I think people would know, including like Dungeons and Dragons. You did the the credits this year. That's a you know big hit movie that probably a lot of people saw. I like. How did you get? Like, how did that, how'd you, I, I mean, for lack of a better question, like, how do you figure, how'd you figure that out? And how do you figure out that you were, this is something you were really good at? Cause obviously, you know, you don't have to say you're, I think you're very good at it. I mean, like, how'd you figure that out basically? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you. And it, it obviously takes a whole team. Like uh, we, we work with a, a bunch of different designers and ideas, people who come up with, uh, who really compliment me when it comes to, um, you know, making these things. And yeah, I mean, a, a good title sequence most of them you want to either set you up for the show to come or um, to offer some kind of uh, plot point that they're not getting from the show um, or, you know, introduce you to the characters or the, the scenes or something like that. So um, it 
it's always at the forefront when we go into these things is okay what does this need to accomplish what does the title sequence what what goal is it serving really um and uh i think with the shrinking one and with the ted lasso one it's always been about a metaphor or some something that can really you can really chew and you know get to the get to the bottom of and of you know trying to figure out what does this mean and why i think once it clicks once you've seen a few episodes you understand it and i think that's what a really a fun title sequence is, is when it takes you a few episodes to really digest exactly what's going on there. And I, I love that about the Ted Lasso one, you know, the idea of the infection spreading, you know, his optimism spreading throughout the, the stadium and the one th shrinking just the, you know, his, his process of being a therapist. Um, it, I, I think that's uh, for those two specifically, that was, that was the driving um, point, but every title sequence is different. Um, everyone that I've done is different. So it, it, it's, uh, it's fun. You mentioned like how like uh, the producers on, on Shrinking were like obviously having worked with you previously were like kind of like, you know, trust entrusted you to like kind of come up with something. Right. So I guess what was there when, when you show, when you presented like what you ended up with, like, I mean, what was their feedback and like, were they just like, yep, yeah, that's great. That's exactly what we're hoping for kind of. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it was uh, working with Kip. It was, it was clear that um, the maze was something that, that, resonated with them. Um, th the challenges were, you know, how do we depict the characters without actually depicting them? You know, the figurines we're using are vague representations of the characters. And um, I think we also had the challenge of we were, in the first few versions of it, we had, uh, you know, fully articulated movement of the characters where they, you know, seemed like real people. Um, and uh, we decided to strip that back to something that, you um, was more like one of those old train figurines, like one of those Lionel train figurines. That was the inspiration behind that. Um, and and the, those all those changes had, were, you know, derived from talks with the creators and the producers about what's working, what's not working. You know, um, sometimes the I think the movement of the characters, uh, you know, it gave it gave certain people more personality than other ones, and. Um, it just worked better having them kind of slide across like a little figurine in through the maze. Um, it made, it made the story come alive a little bit more, even though they were so static. Um, yeah. So it's definitely a lot of back and forth with the creators and the uh, executive producers on the project to make sure that we're hitting all the beats they need to hit and that it, it works within the actual show itself. Right. Do you have, so like, obviously like, but with both Ted and, and Shrinking here, you have these great like theme songs that are obviously like part and part, like kind of intertwined with, with the main titles. And I guess like, I, I, I actually don't even know, would you, is that something that like you, do you have the, do you know the music going in or, or for Shrinking, let's say, did you know that was, that was going to be like the kind of song or the sound maybe? And do you kind of like try to think about that too in the creation of this? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's so much fun working with these guys because they I think that they really love doing needle drops, getting, you know, a, a song, an actual song for the, the title sequence um, it, with with Ted Lasso is um, it was also fun doing it that way um, for for shrinking. We we had heard the uh, the Ben Gibbard track in very early stages, which is also really fun to hear kind of the evolution of the song as we go on. Um, so we had a really early cut of that, which we which we we're playing with and, you know, making animating to the beat, which is important. Um, we don't have much control over what actually happened, what song they pick, but um, our, our role is generally, we take the song, we match the beat. And then I think it, it usually goes back to the songwriter who then matches what we're doing a little bit. So it, it's really, uh, you know, a give and take with them. And it always ends up in the end with something that's really exciting because, we're we're matching to the beat. They're matching to our animation. It's a great like synergy between the two. You met, you mentioned like obviously the animation and stuff, and and for this and even like I mean even Dungeons and Dragons. I mean it looks like it's animated, but it looks like real enough that I'm like I could see being able to hold these things, right? Like I could yeah. hold these shrinking figurines in my hand. I could imagine what they would feel like almost, and like even the hedge maze and stuff that you kind of when they pull back out of the title. Or do you ever make like? Do you make like prototypes of these things in real life or anything like that? Or is it all like digital and like, kind of like, I guess like, yeah. How do you go about that aspect of it? Yeah. Oh, I would, I would love to make <laughs> physical, I'd love really to make cool. a physical maze of this yeah. one specifically. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, but no, I mean, like, obviously I, I take references from the real, real world. I'm, I cannot draw at all. So I, I'm 
purely just a on the computer kind of guy. And um, you know, we worked with a, with a few great character designers to help us get the poses right of the characters. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, it's all just in. In I work in three D, so I go into my three D application and I try to I try to envision it in there. Um, sometimes I do really loose sketches, that kind of thing, but it all stays, you know, digital on the computer. I think what was fun for shrinking was that, um, the first few rounds of it were actually, it, it didn't have that kind of painterly style that we we've attached to it. Um, and it looked very like photo real, like something you would, you know, some kind of CG that you would see in uh, a movie or something. Um, and it was through more discussions with the, I think the, the creators, we decided that it, it needed to be less photo real. It needed to be illustrated or painted. So we did, we, we went through this really cool process using this cool technology that will um, kind of, it, you can paint one frame of the animation and then it will stick it to the whole animation. Um, so yeah, we, we made that conscious choice at some point to, to switch from um, kind of the, what you see every day with the, the CG and make it have an edge that felt a little bit more hand done and a little bit rougher around the edges. Um, and I think it really added to the piece in the end because it, 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 st it stands out from a lot of the other title sequences you see, which are, you know, they're beautiful and they're photo real and they're, um, you know, very CG looking, but this one has that little edge that I think, um, really adds to it. Yeah. It's really cool. It is, is very, very cool. I guess like, I mean, just broadly, like in, for you, like when did when was when did you realize this was like something you could do or would be able like, you know, to be able to do and create like titles for like kind of like TV and movies? Like I said, like you've done like a lot of things. I mean, just going back like you did um, uh, Tokyo Vice last year, Miss America, all these different shows that are like people like really popular shows. I guess like when did you realize this is something you could do as a as a career? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not actually sure. Like it, it, it just kind of happened for me. I, I, I had a company who took a risk with hiring an animator who didn't really know much about title sequences and it, it kind of just snowballed from there. And I, I love doing it. And um, I, I can't really imagine going back to doing something more corporate or, you know, uh, it, it's just a, it's a great outlet for me because I love, I love these stories and I love, um, trying to distill them down into 30 seconds, 10, I mean, sometimes 10 seconds, that, that is just such a fun challenge to me. And, um, I'm kind of addicted to it. So, um, I, you know, it, it just, it kind of just happened naturally. I went, I was a video editor for a while and then, um, just transitioned to doing more titles because that's what I, I found joy. And I didn't, I, I went to film school, so I didn't have much of a, of a graphic design background, but I think, you know, I carried over some skills from editing with pacing and, um, you know, cinematography that really helped um, with the title sequence as well. Yeah, definitely. I would say yes, because they're awesome. And uh, <laughs> James Robertson, the design, main title design uh, for Shrinking and all these other shows you could, you've watched and loved. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. 